There's pretty much only one way to fully end the pandemic. Vaccines. Vaccine. The vaccine, the so-called silver bullet, a vaccine that could free us from the grip of COVID-19. Everyone is hoping for a breakthrough in one of the labs trying to develop one that will protect the world against COVID-19. A shot that gives most of the population immunity could be an instant game changer, potentially allowing life to return to normal. But it's not certain we'll have a working vaccine anytime soon. And if we do all wake up one day to the good news that a vaccine has been discovered, that's just the start. How many doses will be available? And will enough people agree to get themselves vaccinated for it to make the whole population immune? So let's take a look at some of the challenges ahead. The World Health Organization currently lists almost 200 vaccine candidates being tested around the world. But of these, only 42 are in clinical trials. That means the drugs are being tested on human volunteers to see if they produce the right kind of immune system responses to guard against future infection, as well as to look for any kind of side effects. Only 10 potential vaccines are in the last phase of testing worldwide. But according to the Global Vaccine Alliance, GAVI, a vaccine candidate that makes it to clinical trials only has a 15 to 20% chance of succeeding as a final product. It's possible that most, or indeed all of these candidates, will fall at the final hurdle. After a vaccine makes it through trials, there is usually a long process where regulators review the research and make a final ruling on whether the new drug is successful and safe enough to be used. Regulators around the world have already said they will streamline their processes to match the pace at which the scientists have been working. In the United States, the regulator has become embroiled in a political row, with President Trump accusing the Food and Drug Administration of trying to sabotage his chances of re-election in November by slowing the vaccine trials. When you have Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, these great companies coming up with these, the vaccines and they've done testing and everything else, I'm saying why would they have to be, you know, adding great length to the process. Opponents of Mr. Trump are worried that he might try to pressure the agency into granting early approval before the proper safety checks. We'll have doses available when the decision is made by the FDA as to the safety and efficacy, as you've heard. So We're there's no cutting corners. So is a November vaccine realistic? We just don't know at the moment. Scientists at Oxford University, who are working on a leading vaccine candidate, have repeatedly said they hope to have a vaccine before the end of 2020. But the most optimistic forecast of the first deliveries by September, well, that's already passed. Many commentators think spring next year is a more likely target. Governments and drug companies are effectively betting on the contenders now, without any guarantee about which one will win. Many countries have already placed large orders with drug companies who are developing vaccines. Most have essentially hedged their bets, pre-ordering batches from several different manufacturers. That's what the UK government's done, buying more doses per head of population, about five each, than any other country in the world. Other rich nations, like the United States, the EU, Japan, and others, have also placed substantial orders with multiple companies. There's an obvious worry here, though. Rich countries can afford to place big bets like this, but poorer countries don't have the same means. Does that mean the developing world will be left defenseless when a COVID-19 vaccine comes along? The World Health Organization have been trying to stop this from happening. The world needs to resist what we call vaccine nationalism. We need to vaccinate some in all countries rather than all people in some countries. They are encouraging richer countries to sign up to something called COVAX. The idea is that wealthy countries pull their spending power to pre-order vaccines from different manufacturers alongside the separate deals they may have already struck with drug companies. It's not about one country versus another. It's about one world protected. It's been sold as a kind of insurance policy, a way for rich countries to guarantee a significant number of people will be able to get vaccinated, even if their other bets don't come off. The WHO will distribute vaccines around the world in what it calls a fair and equitable way. The finer details have yet to be worked out. But the initial plan is to make sure every country in the world can vaccinate at least 20% of their population. Some experts don't think this is necessarily fair. One country might be in the grip of a raging COVID-19 pandemic, while another might have few cases. Shouldn't the vaccines be sent first to the places where they will save the most lives? And there's a question mark about how committed some countries are to the idea of international cooperation. It isn't just governments that are gambling on vaccine candidates. 
some of the big drug companies have already started planning to mass produce vaccines before they have finished clinical trials. AstraZeneca, who are making the Oxford University vaccine, say they plan to deliver 2 billion doses around the world by the end of 2021. But there's a huge amount of uncertainty. Which company will end up with a winning vaccine? Will that company have enough manufacturing capacity to make enough of the vaccine to go around the world? And will richer countries really look out for their poorer neighbours? Or will so-called vaccine nationalism take over? And there's another big unanswered question. How good will a successful vaccine really be? It's possible that people might need repeated doses for long-term immunity, meaning even more vaccine will have to be manufactured and delivered to communities around the world. And before we go, there's one last possible hurdle to worldwide immunity. Let's say a really good vaccine emerges, factories rumble into life and pump out millions of doses. Will people want to take it? We've seen a growing trend of anti-vaccine conspiracy theories online, with worrying signs that misinformation about vaccines could be spreading far and wide in some countries. A recent Gallup poll found that just over a third of Americans say they would not take a vaccine, even if it was free and approved by the FDA. Could there be widespread resistance to the vaccine around the world? Would governments try to make it compulsory? Vaccines have never been mandatory in the United Kingdom, but some politicians have refused to take that option off the table. But how would the public react to such a drastic step? With still many unknowns surrounding a possible COVID-19 vaccine, it's clear we're going to have to learn to live with the virus for a few more months yet.